I know it sounds You've gone from a very intelligent man and made yourself look completely stupid in 30 seconds. Hello, my name is Jan and this is my colleague Richard. We're here today to ask for an investment of £75,000 into our company Aerodrums in exchange for a 5% share of the business. Before we tell you more about it, Richard is going to demonstrate the product for you. As you can see, using state-of-the-art motion tracking technology, we have developed a legitimate musical instrument that plays just like a normal drum kit. So what's the point? Well, air drumming solves a number of problems that all drummers face. Number one, drum kits are extremely loud. Air drums is whisper quiet if you wear headphones, so you won't disturb anyone. Number two, drum kits are big and heavy. In contrast, air drums fits in a small bag, can be carried anywhere and set up in minutes. Finally, drum kits are expensive. At £129, Aerodrums is very affordable and costs what most drummers would typically pay for a single cymbal. Aerodrums was launched last year and our sales have been growing fast. It is a one-of-a-kind product with very high growth potential and we have no direct competition. We have filed patents, trademarked Aerodrums and secured endorsements from high-profile drummers. Before we invite your questions, would any of you like to try it? A drum kit to stop the neighbours complaining. The brainchild of scientists Jan Morvan and Richard Lee. They're looking for £75,000 for just 5% equity in their innovative product. Concentration on this face. <laughs> but is it innovation worth £1.5 million? <laughs> oh, I see. Sarah Willingham wants to know if there's a business behind the brains. I'm trying to understand the market potential of it. Can you learn to play the drums on this? Yes, you can. So this can be aimed at professional drummers that may be travelling and want to be able to practise. And also this is for people who might just want to get a feel for it without spending loads of money. Yeah. So you're in the very early stages of your business, but do you say that you're already selling? What have you sold? We launched in January last year, so currently we've sold about 1,100 so far. So what does your revenue look like? Revenue is good. Um, in to, to date, we brought in £96,000. And what's the nearest thing to this that currently exists? There's acoustic drum kits, which is the normal thing. But when people think of uh, you know, an alternative, they think of electronic drum kits. These are still priced way beyond what yeah. we sell aerodromes for. But we don't view those as real direct competition because aerodromes has the ability to let people go into drumming who wouldn't have had the space or the neighbours to, to, to put up with this. The musical entrepreneurs appear to be on a roll in the den so far. But with just a 5% equity stake up for grabs, Tuka Suleiman doesn't appear to be marching to their beat. Richard and Jan, it's a gimmick. No, it's not. <laughs> what is it then? It's a musical instrument. Okay. How can you call a musical okay. instrument a gimmick? The fact really is, it is very specialised. I believe it's very small. I'm just amazed how you got the audacity to come here today and say this is worth a million and a half pounds when you've turned over 100 grand? Yeah, I think it's because you don't see the bigger picture. The bigger picture is that I should be made to look a fool to value this business at a million and a half. Explain to me how you got the valuation. We, we looked at where, where, how our sales were growing on the back of fairly, fairly little publicity. If we start selling, I don't know, in, into Turkey, Japan, the market is big. Do you think it's going to come for nothing? All that will cost you more than a million pounds no, it to won't. advertise, to publicise oh, or whatever. We, we need to disagree on, on, on can your I tell statement. You something? We can agree to disagree all day long. You know why? Because I look at businesses all the time. 
right? And for you to come here today with this valuation for 5%, it's a joke. So for that reason, I'm out. Okay, thank you. Thanks. A clash of personalities has left Tuka Suleiman rattled and Richard and Jan without a deal. Will they be any more in tune with a notoriously hard to please Peter Jones? Guys, I think it's really quite impressive. Thanks. And I think that the technology that you've used to create it is quite advanced. My issue is the wide stream nature of the market then the end game. How could we get a deal away with a mainstream player? In terms of the market, this is something that every drummer stands to benefit from. So we think that like, the market potential is huge, especially in light of the fact that most drummers still don't know about it. And in terms of the mass market as well, I mean, we could definitely branch into the kind of video game side and make something that has mass, mass appeal. I want to be able to go and buy on the shelf that Aerodrums game. And next to Aerodrums DVD, I want to buy the two-stick pack. How could we get there? We could easily go there. The main problem with that is needing to be a licensed games developer. It probably would work better to license our, our technology and let them do that heavy lifting that they already do. I'm going to make you an offer, but I think this is one area where sometimes two brains is better than one. So I'm going to offer you half of the money, but I want 20%. Peter Jones makes his move, sold on the mass market appeal of the aerodrums. But for just half of the money, he wants 20% equity. Way more than the 5% Jan and Richard were looking to sell for all the cash. Will another dragon want to partner with him or even cut their own deal? Guys, can I just ask a little bit more about the size of the market? How many people in the UK play the drums, for example? Well, we don't have that figure. Ish. In the US, it would be about a million people, I think. In the US? Yeah. Would you imagine the proportion is very similar? 200,000, maybe. In order to sell lots of these, they really, I need to be buying them for my son. If it was done right, you could make a game that's fun to play yeah. and yeah, yeah. educational that will teach you how to play drums using aerodrums. But to be honest, from the get-go, we knew this wasn't a toy or a fad, yeah. Yeah. and we wanted people to take it seriously. I have a music educational software business that I've started quite recently. It's uh, largely designed for stringed instruments, so I've done quite a bit of analysis of this market. I do think this has mass appeal, and I think if you combine that with the educational side, then I'm very interested in addressing that part of the market. But what I'm looking at is an incomplete management team and an incomplete set of skills. In terms of overall commercial strategy and in terms of building a brand, that's probably what you're missing and that's certainly what we can add. So I'm going to make you an offer. I will offer you the other half, £37,500, for 20% of the business. Do you want to go to the back and have a little discussion with your drumsticks? Yeah. <laughs> With Nick Jenkins offering to put up the other half of the money they've asked for, Richard and Jan have a lot to consider. The entrepreneurs must decide if they're willing to give up an eye-watering 40% of their company, 35% more equity than they came to sell. This is going to sound a bit stingy, but we're going way beyond what we had agreed together before, before coming here. What we're suggesting is that you would each invest half and you would each get 10% of the business. We are four times beyond what we, we came in asking here. Well, that's half of what our offer is. The bit that I think that we're bringing to this party is, you know Nick's background online. And in terms of my background in, in looking at products and pushing them into the market on a global scale, I think that you've got 
two incredibly individual yet powerful people to be working alongside you. And there needs to be an upside. And if I was to own 10% of this business knowing the amount of work that's going to need to be done, my level of excitement wanes. I would be prepared to go down to 15%. I'd match that as well. You're now getting, our counter is all of the money yeah. for 30%. It would be so crucial that we, we get along well if you're going to have a huge involvement in the company at that level of, of equity. We, it's not a decision we can make now. We, we need to have a few drinks we, with you. Are you uh, seriously, Yanni, are you for real? <laughs> have you watched Dragon's Den? I have, yeah. Right, so you know, you come in here, you ask for investment, OK? Yes. You get an offer for investment, and then you try and say that we want to go out for a drink and have a chat before you decide whether it's a yes or no. I know it sounds You've gone silly. from a very intelligent man and made yourself look completely stupid in 30 seconds. You basically have to say yay or nay now, and if you say nay, there's no going back afterwards. But you both are not the only experienced business people on the planet. Are you saying that you're not going to accept an offer for 30%? And no. No, I, I'm rejecting the offer. I think this is one of those moments which is always disappointing um, for either party to get a rejection. But I have to say, I think this is something that you're going to live to regret. Thank you very much. Goodbye. So an opportunity disappears into thin air as Aerodrum's inventors decide not to concede to the Dragon's equity demands. They're mad. That's so that stupid. Is, can't believe it. Well, they are, mad they are mad scientists. But I mean, ultimately, they turned it down for 10%. Yeah. That, that's the reality of what yeah. just happened. Yeah. They just turned down what, that amazing 5% each. Yeah, 5% each. 5% each.